right, let's come on in, find our places this morning. I do apologize. I let the time get away from me. We're about a minute or so past schedule. But I'm glad you're here. We're looking forward to a good morning. And it's just been a joy already just to fellowship with folks and kind of catch up on how everybody's been. And so thankful for you being here. Let's take our songbook. We'll sing this song as we get started this morning. Page 172. 172 just over in the glory land and we look forward to that day when we get to go home amen let's stay and sing it out on this good song i have a home prepared where the saints of Long to be by my Savior's side, just over in the glory land, just over in the glory land. I'll join, yes, join the happy angel band, just over in the glory land, just over in the glory land. There with a mighty host. I am on my way to those mansions fair, just over in the glory land, there to sing God's praise and His glory share, just over in the glory land, just over in the glory land, just Watch strong, I will shout and sing over in the glory land. Glad to send us to Christ the Lord and King. Just over in the glory land. Just over in the glory land. Now join, yes, join a happy angel band. Just over in the glory land. Just over in the glory land, there with, yes, with a mighty host of stand. Just over in the glory land. Amen. All right, let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this day. We're very thankful for uh, the opportunity to be in church today. And we're thankful for your many blessings. And God, I just pray that you'd meet with us this morning in a special way. And Lord, we desire to receive some help from heaven today. And Lord, I pray that you would just bless every part of the service, the singing, the preaching. And Lord, I pray that you would get the honor and glory from all that's said and done today. We ask your blessings on these things. In Jesus' name, amen. Yep. You may be seated. Take your psalm book. And let's turn over to page 148. 148 now. Where will never... Grow old, amen. Page 148. Think about the words as we talk about heaven here this morning. Where we'll never grow old. I have heard of a land on the faraway strand. Tis a beautiful home of the soul. Built by Jesus on high, where we never shall die. Tis a land where we never grow old, never grow old, never grow old in a land where. Never grow old, never grow old in a land where we'll never grow old. 
to change up that timing. I think I messed up. And uh, we'll change that. We'll correct it this time. Here we go. In that beautiful home where we'll never more roam, we shall be in the sweet by and by. Happy praise to the King through eternity sing. Tis a land where we never shall die, never grow old, never grow old, in a land where we'll never grow old, never grow old, never grow old, in a land where we'll never grow old. our work here is done and the life crown is won and our troubles and trials are o'er all our sorrow will end and our voices will blend with the loved ones who've gone on before and never grow old, never grow old, land where we'll never grow old, never grow old, never grow old, in a land where we'll never grow old. great singing this morning. Let me give you quite a few announcements today, and I want to give you some prayer requests and things. And let's see here. We've got our missionary of the week is the Jackson family this week, and so I encourage you to pray for them especially, and just lift them up in prayer as they're uh, raising support to go to India. I think they might be in India right now on a survey trip trying to get some things nailed down and uh, they are probably getting close to their um, to being fully supported and so they're a great family these are uh, you know some missionaries you come through and they just stick out more than others uh, this is one of those families a young family and they're just uh, first class on the ball and I know the Lord's going to use them in a great way so remember them uh, let's pray for these folks pray for Miss Janet Nolan uh, she had her surgery on her shoulder this week and she is at home now and uh, doing pretty good but continue to pray for her and her recovery and I know they appreciate that very much uh, continue to pray for Miss Felton uh, with her health and all the things that she's dealing with she does send a thank you card to the church today I'll read it quickly it says God is so good and so is my church family I just want to say a big thank you for all your thoughts and prayers the power of prayer is bigger than anything else we can do for each other and that is very true uh, so thank you from the bottom of my heart. I love each and every one of you. Thank you, Pastor Miller and family, for all you do. Uh, she has to go to uh, the uh, neck doctor and, and see about having surgery possibly on her spine. She's got some uh, some issues there causing some problems, so continue to pray for her. Be blessing. Pray for the Gaddis family. I don't see Miss Cheryl here today, but uh, the funeral is this afternoon for Will's dad. His name was Brent Gaddis. We'll be here at 3 o'clock at the funeral home, and if you would pray uh, that the Lord would help, I'll be bringing the message at the funeral, and uh, if you're able to stop in and show your support for them, I know that'd be a blessing, uh, but that'll be at 3 o'clock this afternoon. Uh, we've got several things going on. Uh, let me just go quickly through the announcements. Uh, midweek service on Wednesday, I always want to keep that in front of us. I'll be studying uh, John, uh, the book of John here on Wednesday night. Look forward to that patch club as well. This Saturday, I'm taking the young folks to a youth rally in St. Louis. And uh, any adults that want to go, you're welcome to attend. It's always good fun just to watch the kids make fools of themselves and uh, eat the food. And then there's always good preaching, and you'll enjoy. I think it's evangelist uh, Mari Gibson that's preaching. Uh, this is in Arnold, Missouri at uh, Gateway. I'm sorry. Um, 
Do you remember the name of that church? Is it Arnold Baptist Temple? Anyway, Brother James Beller used to pastor there and Arnold Baptist Tabernacle. And um, it's a good, good church, good folk there. And uh, we'll leave at 7.15, so we have to leave a little bit early. And this, it starts at 10 o'clock. And uh, so you pray for us. And like I said, if you'd like to go, uh, just let me know. Next Sunday, this for the teachers, just a reminder, and the young folks, is Sunday School Promotion Sunday. So some of the young folks will graduate to their next class, and uh, that's just a reminder there. There is a blood drive here at church on August the 19th. Um, August the 29th, um, I'd like to designate that week uh, for just to get some projects finished up if you're able to help. Honestly, if you want to volunteer some time before then, uh, you could do that. But we want to make sure we get everything spruced up and finished up for Anniversary Sunday, get everything looking in tip-top shape, and we're looking forward to that. Uh, I mentioned this Wednesday night, and this uh, is a little bit different scheduling this year, but the Joy Bags are out now, and these are the Christmas bags that you can put together. They'll go to a child um, across the, the ocean somewhere in, in a different uh, field of, of of a missionary I'm stuttering over my words here but uh, these go to missionaries and they give them out to the children in the in the villages and they'll have the gospel with them they're doing a little bit early this year the completion date needs to be September the 10th and so we put those out um, you need to watch the video on their website there's instructions and they really want you to to follow the instructions with how to fill them it just makes it a whole lot easier for them um, but so we've got about three weeks or so, um, four weeks to, to do those. If you, if you want to go on their website, you can also donate. Instead of going out and filling the bag yourself, you can just donate money. Then they'll take the money and they have workers at the warehouse. They'll fill the bags and ship them out. So if you're interested in that, uh, grab those bags on the back and begin working on it. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll try to help with that. Uh, anniversary Sunday, let's talk about that on September 18th, so we're getting closer, and our 70th anniversary, we've got a full day planned, it's going to be a, an exciting day, homecoming Sunday, we want to reach out and uh, invite folks that have been a part of our church, uh, they might not even live around here, but they'll come back for a special day, and we'll have the Epley family with us, Brother Steve and Miss Epley, uh, singing, food, preaching, it's going to be all the works, and we've got giveaways and promotional things, and some, some special 70th uh, anniversary items that we'll have to give out that day. And so there's a letter on, the, or there's a sign-up sheet on the back table. If you would like for someone to receive an invitation from the church and you know that they have come in the past or they're connected, um, write their name and address down. And this week we're going to do a mail out and, uh, and try to get the ball rolling. And then we'll, we'll follow up with that a little bit later. But let's be in prayer for it. I'm excited. This is a big one, and uh, we're looking forward to, to all that. Uh, then one last announcement, I think, is uh, we are going to uh, send a special uh, love offering to the Bible Baptist Church in Hazard, Kentucky. We'll send that tomorrow, and this will go to help with the flood relief. Uh, their, their area was just devastated, and several folks have asked how they could help. Of course, this has been on the national news it's, it's that magnitude. And um, the, the church there is set up as a, a relief center or, or, I'm sorry, as a distribution center. They can't house people there, um, but it's a distribution center. And they have, they've got so much that's been given to them already, food and clothing. Their gymnasium is full of things. And uh, they, they've got everything set up. Uh, financially as well to receive donations and to be able to help people and, and their own church is going to have to do some repair work they got flooded a little bit and so if you want to give that uh, note that on your giving on the envelope or on your check memo line uh, just put on there a, a Kentucky flood or something of that nature and then we'll get that uh, sent out tomorrow uh, I feel so helpless up here and of course this is my wife's hometown and and you want to be down there and help, but uh, it's amazing. It really is all of the support, and it's not just their church. I mean, there's places everywhere. There's another pastor friend that uh, his church is actually housing folks, and uh, they have shower facilities, 
uh, they they have cots all over their auditorium. They probably had 40 people sleeping in their church, people that lost their homes. Uh, and what do you do? I mean, you just do what you can, move the cots out of the way for Sunday and have church, and they're seeing people saved. Um, and it's all over. Uh, the, the amount of, of help is just amazing. Uh, but I, I, I plan to give in that offering, and it'll be, a, it'll be a good thing for the church there. Let's take our song books now. We'll sing another song. And then we'll take our offering. Well, if we're going to be in a land that never grows old, that's going to be glory for me. 147. Number 147. given our offering today it is the first sunday of the month so another new month to give back to the lord let's be faithful in that brother uh, peebler would you ask the lord's blessing on our offering
Take your Bibles to 2 Kings in chapter 4. Appreciate that song from Miss Kelly there. It's no secret what God can do. It's a blessing. 2 Kings chapter 4. If you will stand when you find your place. We'll read beginning in verse 1 down to verse number 7. 2 Kings chapter 4. <clears throat> You follow along as I begin in verse number 1. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in thy house? And she said, Thine handmaid hath not anything in the house, save a pot of oil. Then he said, Go borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels. Borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shalt pour out into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. And it came to pass when the vessels were, were full that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a, ves a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go sell the oil and pay thy debt and live thou and thy children of the rest. It's a very interesting story here, but there's such a great truth that I find. There's a couple different uh, truths, but there's a parallel meaning behind this story that I think the Lord would have for us this morning. I've had this thought for several weeks, and I believe the Lord would have this for us today. Here's the title of the message, When All You Have Is A Pot Of Oil. When All You Have Is A Pot Of Oil. And I hope that you'll listen this morning. This will be a help to us. Uh, let's pray, and then we'll have a song, and then I'll preach. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity this morning to preach your word. I thank you for this passive scripture, a tremendous story of how you used uh, this lady, you used the man of God here. You did a great work in this widow lady's life. Lord, I pray you do a great work in our life today. Do something in our hearts that would cause a fire to burn hotter and brighter than perhaps it's burned this week. Lord, that we would be challenged and stirred to serve you this week. Lord, to do something for you. Lord, I need your help. I do pray that you would guide my thoughts this morning. And Lord, just take control. And Lord, we want you to speak to us today. Bless this song. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. But sometimes I wonder 
Read, read for me the first line of that song. What are those words? I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength, but sometimes I wonder what he can do through me. No yeah. great success to show, no glory on my own, yet in my weakness he is there to let me know. That, that's an amazing thought. Um, and it's a good reminder, and I'm, I'm amazed so many times how the Lord will put thoughts together, and th this will tie right in with the message here in a way, and uh, what God can do through me. And uh, we see here in this passage of Scripture, uh, thank you, Miss Kelly, for that song, that uh, this widow woman was in a, a difficult spot in life. And um, we've heard the old song that says, Be not dismayed, whate'er be tied. God will take care of you. And God will take care of you. We sing that. Uh, we preach it. Uh, we try to testify of that. But perhaps sometimes we might actually wonder, uh, will God take care of me? And uh, no doubt we have to battle our flesh and have to remind ourselves of the promises of God. We wonder, will God really take care of me? Recall the life of George Mueller, and he was a tremendous servant of the Lord that, uh, that built orphanages and helped young people. And he was in England, and it was said of George Mueller that he did not take a salary. He didn't take a penny, but he relied upon God to provide all of his needs and the needs of his orphanages. They obviously needed a lot of money, a lot of food to support the hundreds of of young people that he brought in to those homes. He was a man of faith, and he kept this motto on his desk, this saying, and it helped him through the years to bring comfort, to bring strength to his heart. Here's what that motto said. It said this, It matters to him about you. It matters to him about you. You, meaning God cares for you. We understand the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. And Mr. Mueller testified at the end of his life, he said this, God has never failed to supply all my needs. And God sure is good to that. Now in this story, we certainly find the truth that God will take care of you. Uh, the story is, is an amazing story, and, and uh, we'll go through it here. But uh, the short story is her, this widow's husband had passed away, and uh, she, ha she didn't have anything. Uh, she was a very poor lady. The Bible says that all she had, according to verse number uh, 2, she said, I don't have anything in my house except a pot of oil. Now, uh, let's, uh, let's remind ourselves here that this story is not a parable uh, like there are in the New Testament. Many parables that Christ uses to bring home a, 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 a heavenly lesson that he wants to teach his people. Uh, this is an actual real-life event. Uh, this actually took place. This widow said, I don't have anything. I'll, the only thing I have is a pot of oil. And, uh, and so her husband had passed away. Uh, she called for the preacher and and Elisha there, he, he came to help her. And we understand that uh, she had some debts. And as her husband had passed away, she needed to take care of these debts. And the creditors had come, and they were going to take her two sons to, uh, to, to become a, a servant for them. The word here the Bible says is a bondman. They were to become bondmen, which was a legal thing that could be done, they would take them and they would then work off the debt. They would work to pay back the debt if they didn't have money. So she lost her husband. Uh, she was getting ready to lose her two boys for who knows how long it would take for them to work off this debt. It could have been months. It could have been years. We don't know the particulars of that. So she was in a bad situation and uh, God came through and God provided for her need. He met her need exactly what she needed, and it's an amazing story. We'll get to the particulars of that here in just a little moment. But, uh, but, but here's what took place. God met her needs. Now, the central focus of this story is this. It's the oil. 
the middle part of this story, the focus of everything that took place was on that oil. And we see the truth of God taking care of her, but we also see a truth pictured in the oil. A truth pictured in the oil. A parallel story, if you will, a parallel meaning with this pot of oil. Now in Scripture, we find that oil is used to serve as a picture of the Holy Spirit, of the presence of God, of God's working in my life, of God's power in my life. And I want to look and consider the story today of how it can deal with this matter of revival in my life and revival in your life. There are many things that took place and as we look at this lady and what she did, we can see how it can relate to us. And in this area of God taking me, God using what I have, God working through me, as uh, she sang in that song, His strength through me can be made perfect in our weakness. And we can see that uh, this lady has a tremendous picture of God taking something, God using it uh, to make a difference in her life. Notice, first of all, this lady faced a dilemma. She had a dilemma, and it was a difficult one. First of all, she uh, had lost her husband. And uh, this is a great dilemma when you lose a loved one, especially if it's a spouse. She was dealing with grief. Uh, we're going to have the funeral service today and try to be a comfort to this family as they have lost a loved one. It's never easy to lose uh, someone that you love, and there's days of darkness there's days of grieving there's days of pain we're uh, told here in the story that the bible says this lady cried out now there cried a woman a, a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet she was in turmoil and uh, it reminds us that we need to especially take good uh, care of of the widow ladies and the widowers and understand uh, there are difficult days that they go through she was facing a great dilemma here. Her husband was a good man. Uh, her husband was a godly man. And as I think of our uh, church ladies that have lost husbands, many of them, if not all of them, were good men and were godly men. The Bible says, She told Elisha, Thy servant, my husband, is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant, speaking of her husband, did fear the Lord. What a great testimony, amen, to be said of you that you feared and served the Lord. So her dilemma was partly due to the death in her family. But not only was it the death, it was the death that was owed. Uh, the debt of her family. And the Bible says that the debt was great enough that she couldn't pay it. And they came to take her sons to become bondmen. The Bible says in Leviticus chapter 25... And if thy brother that dwelleth by thee be waxen poor, and be sold unto thee, thou shalt not compel him to serve as a bondservant. And we find the principle here of allowing someone uh, to work off a debt. And, uh, you know, I'm thinking in my own life, uh, that might be a good practice. I've got four children, and uh, let me just uh, send them to my creditors and let them pay off my debt for me. Amen. Anybody want to borrow my kids today? And we'll just start loaning them out. And they can pay off your debts for you, uh, pay your car off, pay your house off. Uh, but that's what took place. And so uh, her boys were going to have to leave and uh, to go that. Now, that was a dilemma. Uh, think about it. She lost her husband. That was difficult enough. And now she's about to lose her boys. And, and uh, she had this dilemma. Now, I want to suggest this morning that our dilemma as a child of God our dilemma as a church this morning is great. And our dilemma is this, that we need to continually seek revival. We must continue to say, Lord, revive me. Uh, we understand what the word revive means in and of itself. It means to take something that was alive and to make it alive again to quicken it again, to revive someone would uh, mean that someone was unconscious. They had quit breathing. They were literally on the brink of, of, of death for all eternity, and they are revived. Uh, listen, as a child of God, I'm very thankful 
to know that I've got the Holy Spirit living within me. I'm very thankful to know that there was a day when I was born again. There was a day my sins were forgiven. Hey, listen, there was a day in my life when I was excited to be a child of God and know I'm on my way to heaven. I was excited uh, to serve the Lord. I was excited to make those decisions for Him. But we understand, we grow cold. I was thinking this morning, that our attitude toward revival doesn't need to be, um, you know, here, here, here we are and, and the preacher uh, thinks that, that the church is dead and we need revival and, and we're going to schedule a special meeting here, a special meeting there. Don't think of revival as that way. Think about it as this. I am in continual or I'm in a continued state of need in my life for revival all of the time. Uh, you can picture a fire, if you will. Of course, we don't have fires built uh, really during this time of the year. We don't need them. But as the fall comes and as the winter gets here, there'll be more fires. And people will start a fire. Why? For heat. Now, uh, when you start that fire, it's pretty warm. It's pretty hot. But do you understand you have to maintain the fire? You've got to continue to add wood to it. Uh, you've got to continue to stir it up. I love going to Cracker Barrel. Amen. That's the, one of the, the favorite restaurants. They've got the fireplace in there. You have to keep it stirred up. In my heart, in our hearts, revival needs to be pictured as a fire that needs stirring continually. I need stirred today. Hey, listen, I'm going to need to wake up tomorrow and say, Lord, revive me tomorrow. Uh, Lord, revive me on Tuesday. Do we understand, first of all, that we have a dilemma in our life, a continual need of revival? Notice what takes place here as she realized that she had a dilemma. The second thing is that she had a great desire. She had a great desire. I'm thankful that she had a desire to take care of what she needed to take care of. That she knew her husband was dead and, you know, she said, I'm going to have to uh, figure out something to take care of these debts. And uh, she didn't just throw in the towel and say, all fooey on it. Uh, I'm not going to even put any effort into taking care of this debt. I just let them do whatever they're going to do. No, she said, I've got to do something about this. And she went to the preacher. We, we find here that even though she was in a dilemma, uh, she had a great desire. And we can find here that there's a secret of revival here. Uh, listen, if we understand that we're in a dilemma in our life, that we have this flesh we live in, uh, listen, that we, we understand that day after day, week after week, we've got to stay on fire for the Lord, realize there's a dilemma, but then secondly get a desire to do something about it. She had a desire to do something about it. Uh, here's what she did. And I think this is, this is key uh, in our life for revival. Uh, she said, I'm going to call for Elisha, who is the man of God. She was the prophet of God. And, and so she called for the man of God. I think it's important to know exactly who she called for. Do we understand that in our life, when we need God to do something, guess where we need to go? We need to get to God. We need to get to church. Hey, listen, we need to get to uh, the man of God so we can hear the preaching of the word of God. I'm amazed at my life, in my life at how people don't think church is important. Yeah. I'm amazed, Miss Felton, at how people don't think I need preaching all the time. Listen, that's what keeps me going. Uh, that's what stirs me up. I know that I'm behind the pulpit and I'm preaching several times a week, but I need preaching myself. I've got to go and listen to uh, some pastor friends on the internet get preaching during the week. Uh, listen, I need preaching. We need preaching. And it's amazing how many people think they can get by without preaching, without uh, talking to the man of God, without going to church, except when they have problems. And it's amazing to me that folks look at church, they look at God, they look at the man of God as an emergency kit. And when I have problems, I run to that emergency kit. Hey, listen, let's just stay in church, amen? 
And but but she she went to the man of God. She knew exactly where to go for help. And that tells us today that the help that we need for revival in our life, the help that we need for revival in our church, in our country today, doesn't lie within the educational institution. Uh, the secret for revival this morning is not found in Congress. We know that for sure. It's not found in the White House for sure. But it's found, listen, in God's house. It's when God's people see their need. They say, we're in a dilemma. And when we call upon God to meet that need. Mr. Duncan Campbell said this, and I quote, a sense of need and the spirit of repentance is a vessel into which God will pour himself in recovering grace. He means this, to the hungry soul, God will satisfy. To the thirsty heart, God will satisfy. To the longing being, God will satisfy. It's only found in him. We, we've got to have a need for it. Uh, we've got to put forth a desire for that revival. We see what the man of God did. And he said, you know what, I'm going to put this lady to the test. I know she's come to me for help and she needs me to give her some advice on how to take care of the situation that she's in. But he put her to the test. Notice what he said in verse number two. He said, what can I do for you? And I believe she told him her story. And then here's what he said. Okay, he said, ma'am, tell me, what do you have? in your house what do you have what can God take that you have and begin to use to help out in this situation he now looked at this widow lady and he asked her a question to determine how bad do you want God to do something for you it all goes back to that desire. Do you have a desire for God to work in your life this morning? Uh, you say, I've got a need. I, I want to serve the Lord. I want to raise a family that's uh, living and serving for the Lord. I want to be a testimony to those I'm around. Well, how bad do you want that to happen? What kind of desire do you have? I, I think we'd all say this. I mean, we've uh, mentioned this multiple times. But I'd all, I think we would all say, I want to succeed for the Lord. I don't want to fail. I don't want to be a castaway. Now, I don't want to turn back on the Lord. I want to. But listen, it goes beyond that. How bad do you want it? And so he asked this question. And the first question he asked her, he said, what do you need? What do you need? He said, uh, what shall I do for thee? And what hast thou in thy house? Uh, what do you need? Uh, there was a man that was standing at a crossroad. And he threw a stick into an air, into the air three times, letting it fall on the ground each time. A man passing by asked him, he said, why are you doing that? The guy replied, because I want to know what the right road for me to take is. And I will go whichever way the stick points. So then the man asked, why did you throw the stick up three times? And the guy said, because it wasn't until the third time that it pointed in the direction I wanted to go. Now, that's a silly illustration to maybe prove a point. It's the same way in how we deal with God and spiritual things. We say, Lord, I'll do this. I'll give you my life. I'll give you my heart, I'll serve you as long as it is this way. But oh, if you want me to do this, I don't think I can do that. Now listen, Elijah asked the lady, he said, what shall I do for thee? He was asking her the question, what do you need? What do you need? In our life, what do we need? Am I willing to pay the price? Am I willing at whatever cost it is to do what God wants. There was another question. He said, not only what do you need, but he said, what do you have? What do you have? Uh, do you understand we have a need today? Now, the question is, what do you have? What do you have? Now, uh, we, we see an interesting story here as he asked, what do you have? She said, I don't have anything except a pot of oil. Uh, so he tells her to go and... Uh, uh, 
uh, let, me, let me not get ahead of myself. Uh, let me say this. The condition for this miracle that, that this lady needed, not only rest in what she needed, but the miracle rested, and this is so amazing, in what she already had. So many times we look at life and we say, Lord, I, I need this, but there's no way I can get to that point. Uh, we'll say, Lord, yes, I want revival. I want to be used of you. I, I want to have a testimony. I want to raise my family. But I just don't see how I, that, that can happen or, or whatever the need is. But the interesting thing about this story, she had everything she needed already. She didn't think she had much. And she answered the prophet, I really don't have anything. Yeah, I've got this pot of oil over here. Perhaps her husband had used this oil before, before he passed away, but since he had died, it had been sitting there on the shelf. But it's in this oil where the miracle takes place. It's something that she needed, but it was something that she already had. And the prophet saw that in this one pot of oil, God is going to do a miraculous work through this. And God is going to provide a miracle to meet your needs. It began with what she already had. <coughs> Excuse me. We see that uh, the story says uh, she told uh, her, uh, her, uh, her sons, said, go and uh, get all these vessels in verse number uh, Three, all the vessels of thy neighbors, all their empty vessels. He said, uh, don't borrow uh, just a few. He said, bring a bunch, bring all that you can find. And so the Bible says that uh, verse five, she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels to her. So can you imagine her boys going out to all the neighbors and saying, we need pots. Hey, we need all the pots that you can give us. And they began to bring home uh, just pot after pot after pot. And uh, the, all of a sudden, you, you can picture in her, in her mind that the room began to fill with empty pots. She's thinking in her, in, in her mind, what is going on? I mean, this doesn't make sense to me. Why am I uh, bringing these empty vessels here to the house? Something I notice about this need being met, this miracle being met, is that she involved her family. She involved her family in this. And all listen, as we go through life, as we seek to serve God, as we seek to have the Holy Spirit's power on our life, as we seek revival, let's show our family what God can do. Uh, let's show, I want my, my children uh, to not just hear the stories of God working, but I want them to see it and experience it their, themselves. And so they had exactly what they needed for this miracle to take place. Now, in our life, God is not interested in what your neighbor has. God's not interested in what another church might have. In order to start revival, God's interested in what you have. And I believe this morning what you have and what I have, what we possess, is exactly what God wants. It's exactly what He needs to work with. The Bible says that uh, He can do above all that we think or ask according to the power that worketh in us. What you have this morning is something God can work with. And reveal the power of Himself in your life. In other words, this, give God your all this morning. On tomorrow morning, give God your all. When you wake up, say, Lord, I don't have a lot today, but what I have, I'll give you. And take that little bit and surrender it to God fresh every day. Serve Him every day. Serve Him every week. That's what revival is. It's when I say, Lord, I need you again tomorrow. Lord, I need you again this week. Lord, do a work in my heart, in my life. And though we may only have one pot of oil, that oil is enough for God to take and use it to spark a flame of revival. So many times the problem, we think, lies in what we have. But that's not the truth. The problem doesn't lie in what we possess, but in what we perceive. 
And perhaps the reason we don't see things happen in our life and we don't see things happen in these days is perhaps we just don't expect it to happen. We in our minds say, this is what I've got. It's not anything. And there's just no hope. I don't think it can happen. But with God, the Bible says all things are possible. Perhaps we don't really believe that God can. I said, first of all, she faced a great dilemma. Then, second of all, she had a great desire. I like what she found here. Third, she found a great delight. What was the great delight? Well, we see here that, uh, that God provided. And we see God's provision here in her life. In verse 3, the prophet said to go borrow all the vessels, borrow not a few. And so she did that. And they came back, the Bible says in verse 6, when the vessels, uh, I'm sorry, verse 5, uh, she shut the door and her and her sons. And the Bible says, and she poured out. And she poured out. What does that mean? She took that one vessel of oil that she had. She has all these empty vessels now. And the Bible says she began to pour out of that vessel. Can you picture in your mind? And it came to pass, the Bible says, when the vessels were full, that she said unto her son, bring me yet a vessel. And he said, there's not a vessel more. Uh, notice what took place. She took that pot of oil, that vessel she had, and she began to fill this pot here. And uh, there was still more oil left in her own vessel. And then she filled this pot up and she began to move on and she began to fill all the vessels in that room. And when she got to the other side of that vessel and she ran out, she said, hey, I still have more oil left in my vessel. She said, hey, son, go bring me some more vessels. And they said, mama, we've got all the vessels that we can find. There are no more vessels. And the Bible says that the oil stayed in her vessel. What an amazing picture this is of the superiority of God's provision. You see, it is God that can do things that we don't think can be done. It is God that can bring revival. God can do only what God can do. God began to go above and beyond all that she could comprehend. I could not comprehend that. Uh, Darren, he, is, is, he likes to do some coin tricks and some magic tricks. And you look at these things and your mind just doesn't comprehend it. You say, I know I just saw that coin. I know your hands are empty. But that coin didn't just vanish in thin air. It's got to be somewhere. But I can't figure it out. That's the way it is with God. Hey, listen, friend, you aren't going to be able to figure it out, but you just have to take what you have and say, Lord, here it is. I'll obey you. I'll go get the vessels. We'll begin to fill them up. I don't see how it's going to work, but Lord, I'll do it. And God, it doesn't make sense to me how that you want for me to give my life and to be a living sacrifice. And Lord, it just doesn't make sense how uh, you, you want me to give and to tithe. But Lord, I'll do it. Lord, I, I don't understand how I need to be faithful to church when the doors are open. But God, I'll do it. Lord, it doesn't make sense for me all the time. Uh, the, 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 the path that you want me to take as far as leading my family in this world and being a light for you. But God, I'll do it. And he'll take what you have and he'll begin to... Do a miracle. Only God can do it. It finally got to the point here where there were no more vessels that could be filled up. And that's what God wants to do with us. He wants to, uh, to, to figuratively speaking, He wants to take the one pot that we do have. He wants us to obey Him. He wants us to trust Him. He wants us to follow Him and just to keep on going in our life. You see, it's not about what I can do, but it's about what God can do through me. The sufficiency of it was the oil stayed. Not only was she experiencing a powerful God, the one that could only meet her need, but the Bible says the oil stayed, it means this, God didn't stop providing for her needs. It just kept on and kept on and kept on. You understand revival is not a one-time deal. 
I'm thankful that I put my faith and trust in an all-powerful God in heaven. He's the one that can save me. He's the one that will take me to heaven. I can't do it. He can do it. And I'm thankful that that day I gave my life to Christ. I began to experience God to work in my heart and in my life. And I'm thankful that that has never run out. Oh, listen, there's been days when I've been cold. There's been days when I've not been as close to the Lord as I need to be. And the honest truth is there's more days than I care to admit that's been like that. But can I tell you, God's sufficiency is this. He'll stir me again. Hey, His sufficiency is this. You go back to that pot of oil. The Holy Spirit is there. And He began to pour that oil out into that vessel. And He can fill you up again today. And He can fill you up again tomorrow. And you can experience His presence day in and day out. The sufficiency is the oil stayed. Then the Bible says she told the man of God what happened. And um, he says here in verse number 7, Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go, sell the oil, and pay the debt, and live thou and thy children of the rest. He knew all along what God's plan was. The preacher knew. He said, If you'll do this, and if you'll follow this, I can promise you this will happen. Uh, he, he wasn't some special person, some uh, psychic, some you know, guy that could foresee the future. No, he was somebody that walked with God. He was somebody that lived by principles. He was somebody uh, that said, here's what God wants us to do. Now let's do this. That's all the preacher is, someone that takes the word of God and says, hey, can I tell you, friend, I have found something that works. Hey, can I tell you, I found someone who'll meet your needs. I found someone that'll care for you. Hey, listen, I found someone that will do a work in your life if you'll let him do that. And so she took the oil. I love the story. And she sold that oil now, and she paid off her debts. Uh, If you would put it like this, you could say, like the fairy tales, and her and her sons lived happily ever after. Why? All because of God. The same is true today. When God moves... God will do what the evangelist can't do. I've experienced some sweet times with the Lord these last several weeks of my life, and it all got, kind of got started at summer camp. Man, I tell you what, I, I long for that to continue in my life. You see, God can do what somebody else can't do. God will do what the singers can't do. God will do what the preachers can't do. And when true revival comes, it will come from God. Can I challenge you this morning in your heart and in your life to seek revival every single day? Do you desire for God to show up and just begin to work things out? I I do. I really do. I, I desire for the Lord to step into our church and to just take over and so we can see some things happen. Uh, listen, we're about a month away from Anniversary Sunday. And, and we're going to have a time on Anniversary Sunday, I'm telling you. We're going to praise the Lord. We're going to thank Him for His goodness. But this church hasn't been here for 70 years without God doing some things. And the truth is this, I want God to continue doing some things. I don't know what God has in store for our ministry and for our church, but I know He has something. I know He desires to change lives. I know He has a desire to see people give their heart to Him. Oh, it's burdensome to me to go for weeks upon weeks and to not see someone walk the aisle and to get saved. I understand the dynamics of our church. We're we're in a small town and... I understand all those things, but it bothers me. It bothers me to not see the baptism stirred for weeks and months upon end. And that should bother you. And you understand that sometimes we just have to say, Okay, God, I don't have a lot. I've got a pot of oil, and I'll let you have it. 
Give God what you have and say, Lord, use me. Lord, stir my heart. Listen, I desire for the Lord to stay close to me. Hey, we're doing good right now. I hate to say that out loud because the devil's listening, but we're doing good right now. I want to keep that. I want you to experience what God can do in your life. I want you to experience the miracles that can take place, the things that God can do, how He can pick up the broken pieces. He can put them back together again. He can mend things and make them whole. He can get you back on the right path. There was a tremendous revival that took place in the 1920s. And if you want to do a history lesson on the Ulster Revival, you should look that up. But a tremendous, tremendous revival that took place in the 1920s. And it was said when that revival took place, the Holy Spirit showed up. The Holy Spirit began to convict hearts and lives. People began to get saved. People began to get right with God. And it was said that the workers in the shipyard brought back so many stolen tools that new sheds had to be built just to house the recovered property. People begin to get right with God, and I have stole this, I have taken that. People begin to bring things back. I'm telling you, listen, when God moves in, it's going to be genuine. You're not going to have to try to, uh, to, 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 to drum up uh, some uh, crazy experience. No, it'll be real. It, it won't be counterfeit. I can tell you what I've experienced of the Lord in my life has been real. I, listen, I don't live a life and, and uh, live a life and I think this is some fake life that I'm living. I, I don't just go through the motions. No, it's real. When revival comes, it will be sufficient. When revival comes, lives will be changed. I love this story. Uh, it's a story for sure that God can meet my needs and God will do it in His own way. But it's also a parallel picture of the Holy Spirit of God moving in. Bringing revival. Filling our hearts. Filling us with His power. Realizing it's Him working through me. His strength uh, being perfect in my weakness. And the Bible says the oil stayed. You understand this? The Holy Spirit of God, if you're a born-again Christian this morning is there to stay. He's not moving out. You have eternal security. However, we don't always give Him place in our life. It's a choice. It's a daily decision to be filled with the Spirit. To be filled with the Spirit. Uh, listen this morning. Don't waste an opportunity for God to do a work in our hearts. The widow lady, she could have got discouraged, she could have done something different and she would have missed out. Don't be the Christian that goes through life saying, I wished this and I wish that. There's a song that says, Lord, send a revival. Lord, send a revival. And here, here it is. It says, and let it begin with me. Let's bow our heads this morning. Thank you, Lord, for this truth found in Scripture. Sometimes I feel like all I have is a pot of oil. And in my eyes, I feel like it's nothing. I feel like I'm so poor. I feel like I don't have anything that I would look at that is valuable for you to have. But Lord, if I realize you'll take what I have and you'll use it. Lord, I thank you for the encouragement of this story. Lord, I don't know the needs this morning. You do. But I do, I do know this. We need reminded continually of revival. Lord, I desire probably more than I have in a while for you to do something in my life the life of our church. Lord, do something again. Lord, we need to see people saved. We need to see altars filled. We need to see the baptism stirred again. Lord, we're very grateful for your blessings upon this church, but we can't live in the past. We've got to continue serving you.
Lord, I pray that you'd help us to make sure we're in the right place with you this morning. Lord, if there's someone here that's not saved, they don't know Jesus as their personal Savior, I pray you'd convict their heart. I pray that they would come this morning to this altar and get that settled. We turn this over to invitation into your hands in Jesus' name. Amen. You will stand this morning, no one looking around. We'll have a simple invitation. If the Lord spoke to your heart, why don't you come as the piano plays. Lord, send a revival. Lord, here I am. Lord, I've just got a little bit, but I'll give it to you. And you see what God can do. You see how he can take that and use it.